Hey folks! Okay, well, before we get too much deeper into tearing apart and creating functions and code on the fly, I want to just take a, a bit of a sidestep and look at, behind the scenes, how these functions are actually represented. And they're actually represented differently based on how they're created. So we'll look at three different formats that we can use to create a function and what the underlying construct looks like based on that. So, the, if, we've, if we're given a function, then we can actually look at the structure of it using the function call. So function and some function name returns the list of code, essentially the code for that function. And again, as we mentioned, there's three different formats that we can have a look at here. There's functions that were created with defun, right, those global functions. The anonymous functions that were created with a lambda. And there's functions created with labels. So if you remember, let blocks allowed you to have local variables. Well, labels allow you to have local functions. So you can have a function inside a function. And then if you've got another labels block inside that one, you can have a function declared inside that. And if you've got a labels block inside that, you can have a function declared in there. So we can have nested function definitions using labels. Now with each of these three methods, the format of the function that they build is going to look slightly differently. So each one's going to start with a symbol that tells us which format it is. And then two of these will actually have environment variables that tell you something about the environment in which they were created. So for labels, since they can be created in a function, in a function, in a function, in a function, we're going to want to include information about where they were created, the environment they were created in. And similarly for lambda functions, there are going to be certain things visible and certain things not visible because of where they're created. So again, we're going to have environment lists that tell us something about the environment in which this particular lambda was created. With the defun functions, on the other hand, they're all created globally, so they don't really need an environment. They've got the global environment. So they'll each have these three different formats. Um, I guess the other distinction being with functions that are created with defun and with labels, these functions will actually have a name, whereas functions created with lambda will not. So these are all the things that distinguish what the parameter, what the structure of the created function is going to look like. All right, so we'll start off with the, the format for functions created with defun. So I do something like a defun g, you know, I tell it my parameter list is x and y, I give it some body. And if we run function g on this, it's going to go off and say, okay, well, what your function looks like is this. Yep, ah, I'm losing my mouse. Looks like this. It starts off with this keyword lambda block, and that's actually the keyword that tells us that it was created with one of these defuns. The name of the function, and then you know everything else that you would expect to see here. Right? The name of the function, the parameter list, and the body. Right. So the only real distinguishing feature for the defun is that lambda block up front. So if we did something like this, let's say I called, I wanted some chunk of code to look up the parameter list for uh, one of these globally declared functions, I could say, well, you know, run function on G, and for the list that comes back, give me, you know, the, uh, so the nth zero would be the type of function, the nth one in this case would be the name of the function, the nth two would be the parameter list. So this would actually give me back the parameter list. Oops, there should be a tilde A and a percent in there. Let's uh, see if we can give that a whirl, just to make sure we've got something reasonably functional here. So let's say we do a defun, uh, what did we call this, g with an x and a y, and the body is going to return the product of the two of them, and there should really be error checks and things in there, but we'll ignore that for the moment. So it goes off and creates a function, and if we take a look at what function g is going to give us, it says, okay, here's what the beastie looks like. Again, uh, system is just a keyword for what namespace this is in, the lambda block, the g, and the body. So if I wanted to try and print out the parameter list for this, I could say params of g are, and we'll throw in our tilde a tilde percent, and we'll want the, 
element 2 of whatever comes back from my function g call. Uh, so that ends my function, ends my nth, ends my format. And there we are. It grabs the parameter list for us. So we can start pulling apart pieces of the function based on knowledge of how it's constructed. All right. So the lambda format, actually, we took a quick look at this uh, a little bit earlier. If we run lambda, it's going to create a function. Uh, you know, say we store it in a variable or something like that and look at the contents of the variable. Then what this is going to return is it'll use the keyword lambda closure or it'll have, it might throw the namespace in front, so system colon lambda closure. These three environment lists, and again, what's in those is going to depend on where you ran this lambda construction, right? The environment that was visi visible at the time that you created the function, and then the body or the parameter list in the body. Right? So similar idea, just missing a name, and it's got this, these three different uh, keyword at the front and the three environment lists. Uh, one of the cautions about those environment lists is they can, not we discussed way back when that lists can actually have cycles in them. The environment lists often do. They often have a pointer back to someplace in the environment list. So if you ever try and do something like this where you get the, um, you you run function or something like that to get the body of a, to get the implementation of a function and you try and print it with a format, you're going to get this infinite printing cycle unless we tell it, unless we tell format don't print cycles. So again, the way you do that is to take this global variable print circle and assign it true. And again, default is false. So we assign it true and then we run format and it will print formatting, but it'll quit if it sees a cycle. Okay, and then the last format was this labels block I mentioned. So with labels, this is like a let block, except that the things that you're declaring in the list inside are a list of local functions. So you will have this list of local functions. Here I've just got one function in the list, just this function h. So within this labels block, I'm declaring a local function h with a parameter list x and y, and the body is uh, you know x times y. So if I was going to do this, and then I took a look at what the implementation of h was, so I did a call to function h, for instance, from within the labels block, because it doesn't exist outside that. Again, it's going to come back with a specific keyword, so lambda block closure this time, or system lambda block closure. And it'll give us, again, these three environment lists that are going to have a bunch of information about the environment that the labels block was in. And again, the name of the function, the parameter list, the body, etc. So we've got these three different formats that we might wind up seeing. And again, what we can do if we can look up the content of a function, then we can do things like pull out, oh, well, I want to I want to pull out the parameter list and have a look at it. And I want to build a new function based off that old function where I add a new parameter or where I you know, add some extra functionality into it and then store that newly created function and do something with it. So all sorts of weird and wonderful things that we'll uh, be able to do with this in the near future. Okay, we'll leave that one there for now.